So Dice Bloom, welcome and thank you very much for being with us to talk about Europe towards 2020, what to expect. Thank you. We would like to do this in two parts, talk about the current state of the Euro, Euro situation for a moment and then try to take an outlook and think about the next five to ten years. To start with the status quo, let me, let me ask a scary question maybe. We've lately seen a bit of a uh, rise in nationalism, in uh, interesting outcome in the ballots. Um, would you see a critical signal on capitalism in Europe um, related to that? Has capitalism failed? I don't think we have uh, capitalism in Europe in the purest sense. We have a social economic model which is quite unique in the world strong combination of a strong economy with a well-developed welfare state. Some v variance, of course, within Europe, but that's the basis. Uh, but I think it needs maintenance because key uh, in uh, our social welfare state and our social economy is fairness. And there are a lot of people worried about fairness. It has to do about who's actually paying the taxes and who are not who are getting the opportunities, who are enjoying globalization and who are taking the costs there. Uh, and what's actually the perspective for my children? Again, reflecting on the current situation in Europe, the biggest single risk that you currently see to unrest Europe? I would say the biggest risk uh, that we are facing in Europe, but not just in Europe, is populism. Um, Europe has been basically undisputed for a long post-war period in which people had, were very confident that Europe would contribute to prosperity and to security, peace. Um, and both of these have been this confidence that Europe was an asset to uh, wealth and, and uh, security that confidence has been shocked, uh, mainly by the financial crisis and the migration issue. Now, we're moving out of the uh, crisis. Uh, growth is quite strong in the Eurozone, unemployment going down, but still high in a number of countries. Debt still high, also in households. So there are still um, repairs to be done, and it's taking time. So in order to protect the fairness you were talking about, these uh, times of soaring inequalities in the system. Do we, do we need to rethink the balance between markets and government, between individual freedom and system? It certainly requires a very active uh, government, a very well organized and effective public sector. It's about a tax system that is fair, uh, in which uh, all of us, uh, also the larger multinational companies, pay their fair share. Apart from that, I would say that markets can play a much bigger role in stabilizing our economy. Um, we have been expecting a lot from uh, the national governments, from public budgets, to sort out the banks, to sort out the economic crisis. Uh, but not all of us have had the fiscal space, the budgetary space, uh, to make those funds available. Uh, markets here and private capital needs to play uh, inevitably a strong role both in new investments in Europe, uh, investing in sustainability, investing in opportunities uh, and also when the next crisis hits uh, private players will have to carry their own burden and be able to carry their own losses to a much larger extent than last time in last financial crisis. In this context Europe has to deal with quite a few, let's say, economic demons these days. One of, one of which being the European banking integration. Your thoughts on that? A path forward for Europe? So the banks, we all know, are crucial in our economy. Um, and there are three things that we need to do. One is we need to become less bank dependent. In the US, 25% of the economy comes from bank finance and the rest is uh, more private uh, finance, uh, uh, company, uh, corporate bonds, uh, private equity, etc. So we need that kind of capital markets also in Europe to diversify the way we finance our economy. The second is, of course, that we need to continue cleaning up 
the banks uh, where there are still problems, non-performing loans, etc. A lot of legacy issues still, but um, I'm optimistic there. I think a lot of work has been done and is, is ongoing. Uh, to complement that, um, we need to finish the banking union. Uh, I would say that three quarters of it is done, but the last part is important for trust. Trust in markets, trust in, uh, from deposit holders. Uh, so let's finish it. If you look at the global economy these days, what is the biggest risks? Are we looking at environmental, societal, or purely financial issues there? Um, I guess political issues are the biggest risk, the biggest source of instability at the moment. Um, the US has been leading in the post-war period on uh, foreign policy, on defense, uh, on trade, and up to the previous administration also up, uh, leading in the field of climate change. Um, and we are at a difficult situation now where Europe needs to lead more. I think that's the only answer that's possible to deal with these divergence of ideas, divergence of approaches. Um, we need to continue to prepare for climate change and to stop it in time. Europe has no other choice. We need to do more on defense. The Americans have a true point there. Uh, and we need to take the lead in topics like free trade, which is in a huge interest for Europe, uh, but also on foreign policy issues where we diverge with the approach that the American government is taking. Mr. Dijsselbloem, thank you so very much for discussing with us. It was a true pleasure. Thank you very much.